Isaiah 61, verse 1 to 4. This is the manifesto of my call. You have heard it over and over. If next week you hear this again, that's my Bible. That's my everything. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. Tomorrow I want to talk about the purpose. So I'll talk about the purpose. The Holy Spirit does not rest upon a man and anoints a man for vanity, for importance, for popularity. There is always a purpose. So pay attention to tomorrow. Many people fail. Those who trust God, they trust God so much that they have never served Satan. They don't do anything evil. But they fail because they don't understand the purpose. God spoke to me in 2006. He told me, the greatest battle you will fight in life will be the battle to fulfill your purpose. I was told 2006. I still remember, like audibly, lying on my bed in Mukoyakan, the first place I pastored as a Catholic priest, as a, a priest in church. See, the greatest battle you will fight will be the battle of your purpose, to fulfill purpose. And of course, by now you know it's true. <laughs> I have had to fight <laughs> to stand here, to have the freedom to say I will move out to anywhere without having restrictions and permissions and rejections. You have to fight. So if you don't understand purpose, you cannot confront the fight of the purpose. If you, can, if you don't understand the purpose, you cannot enjoy the provision of the purpose. Because provision is for a purpose. So you see people, they are in church. Men and women of church. And after some time, God just begins to put some resources in their hand. And arrogantly, they begin to like, look like they are different from every other person. They become senior people. They don't mix up with people. They're just, just, just very special people. They don't understand purpose. Watch them. After some time, there is a crash. And because the crash is go coming, they run to Satan. That's why a lot of people begin blessing. I told you yesterday, blessing started in church and they ended bowing down to Satan. Because Satan, his purpose is so easy destroy and it's easier to destroy than to build what 20 years could have been used in building can be destroyed in 20 minutes if not 20 seconds so destruction is so easy and so the devil will give somebody purpose I give you all of this just that you will do this this and it's simple you will destroy whether you are aware of it or not that's why a lot of people go to self Satan because they say it's in Bob or Samuel or song with them. <laughs> Pay attention, sir. If you will prosper in God, if you will fulfill purpose in God, get ready to embrace difficulty. You have to fight the battle of the purpose. I have fought it and I'm still fighting it. I used to think I would fight for a few years and after I will fight till the last day God calls me home. No retirement. I am willing and I give my will to God for that. And he will fight through me. The battle is his own. The victory is his own. So I talked to you yesterday about that anointing by God does certain things. I told you certain operation. Not exhausting. I didn't prepare to teach this so it's just something that is spontaneous. Just so spontaneous. It's not a detailed thing. You could read a book that tells you fantastic things, but this is just revelation. Few things. I talked about anointing consecrate, sets you apart. So when anointing comes upon you, when the spirit rests upon you, and I told you anointing is painting, it colors you. And by the way, the spiritual governs the earth by anointing. Let me explain. The spiritual rules the earth by spirit and spirit comes upon you gives you a particular color when those who submit to the marine the spirit of the marine comes upon them 
and paints them with seduction. Gives them a specific anointing. So there are people in this city, they go to Satan mama, Satan mommy, and the Satan mommy will transfer the spirit of the kingdom she worships upon them. Can give them powder, give them ring. And their target is wealthy, well-to-do husbands and upcoming people. And paints them with seduction. That's anointing. That's how the spiritual governs the earth, influences the earth. <laughs> These are mysteries. Such people, they walk into a place and suddenly feelings rise. Because the color is not what they wear. Such people, you take them as house, girl, house girls or even sisters-in-law or even cousin, whatever it is, they walk into your midst and change the atmosphere. Marriage crumbles because of that anointing. A man suddenly begins to feel attraction to somebody he should not be attracted to while there is an oil. In many cases, the person with the oil does not know. The same way that you see some people, they carry certain anointing, they are not aware. I think, does this make sense? Yeah, pay attention. This is how families, well to do, they are peaceful, resources, everything. And from the office, maybe one person just came into the office. Maybe one person just have access with the oil that confuses the man. And suddenly, hostility has entered the family. And you are, not, you are fighting with the man. The scripture says the battle, the warfare that we are engaged in is not, it's not a carnal thing. We are not fighting against this man or that woman. The same way a man can come into a family with a painting that confuses the wife. The friend of my husband, he says he's going out with my friend. Is it normal? It's not normal. I can't understand. There is an anointing involved. <laughs> Are you ready for today? I was sent to reveal things. If you pay attention, you will see something. Anointing. Some without the person knowing. Some without the person knowing. So anointing is not just a divine God thing. The kingdom of darkness is nothing other than the corruption of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is the only kingdom. The only responsibility, the only duty of the kingdom of Satan is to corrupt the order of God. That's why every of God's order on earth is reproduced in corruption by Satan. And he uses that to take people into rebellion. The only problem is that the people of the kingdom of God are not serious. They're not. <laughs> look at, just look at attitude in a time like this. It doesn't make sense. Until they hit, boom, and then they run around. And guess where they will run to steal Satan? Because when they come to God, God will take you through a process. Repentance, humbling yourself, and all of Ah, this is your God thing, they too long. I need an immediate thing, just like sharp, sharp. And the devil tells you, come on, it is sharp, sharp. Can you rise? Let's do something. In the name of Jesus Christ, every form of evil anointing that has affected your life without you knowing. By the Spirit of the Lord that is upon me, in the name of Jesus, I order that spare to be lifted bound and sent into the abyss in the name of Jesus. Be seated. Be seated. Be seated. Be seated. Are you ready for revelation? So permit me in your heart. Don't, because I relate with your spirit. I relate with your spirit. 
So in your heart release that I want to hear what God wants to say. Please, because you will hear something. We talked about new beginning. And you have heard of negative anointing. Have you heard things like that? Like there is. Satan also has anointing. That is how, that's what is used in prostitution. Prostitutes are anointed. 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 Do you know 419 people are anointed? They carry an oil that as they talk to you, even though it doesn't make sense, but you feel like going that way because there is an oil that attracts. That's how people, intelligent people are defrauded. Why? These guys is not just intelligence. They submit to a spirit that is upon them that colors them in specific ways. That give them access to people's pockets and resources. <laughs> but anointing is originally, authentically, the administration of God, how he administers the world. When he wants to change a, a generation from a particular problem, God sends his spirit upon a man and colors that man. Remember a man called Samson? He was in response to bondage. What Israel needed was a warrior, a mighty man. They didn't need an army. They just needed one man to respond to the insults of the enemy. And God ordained a man from the womb with specific mystery code. The spirit came upon him. The scripture says the spirit came and began to move him. And colored him with power. So the color, every oil has color. I told you yesterday. Anointing is color that smears. Anointing is oil that smears, that paints. Every oil. Oh my goodness. Oil paints can, can have all sorts of colors and mixtures of colors. That if you add this and this and this, it will become this. This is heavenly. So when the spirit comes upon a person, it produces a color that is relevant to the solution of a problem at hand. That is, I told you yesterday that it is spiritual foolishness for somebody to see a man operating in a particular way, maybe in ministry, and somebody will say, Lord, give me that same anointing, or go to the man, or do anything either by seat. Or... No, you may by any way of connection benefit from that oil, but your oil is different because the purpose of that man cannot be reproduced in you. Every anointing is different. I listened to Winners Chapel when they celebrated their 40th year. I followed that program. I value what God, incredible, unprecedented thing that God has done with the mighty man David of Europe. It's, it's, it's unfathomable. But on that thing, it should be the last day. Abiyoye said something that in, in Winners Chapel, we don't teach marriage. We have a specific mandate. And that is what we focus on. And so, if you want teaching on marriage, go to another place. Very honest thing. But also telling. So should I then say, oh God, let the grace, the anointing you put on David and Yuripo should be put on me? No. Because I'm interested in teaching marriage. <laughs> Because if you succeed in heaven and on earth and marriage is not standing right, you will produce glory and reap future shame. So I cannot say, Lord, give me that which is upon a man. And is very honest truth. A specific anointing works here. And we don't try to do everything. Very clear. That means look for support somewhere else. I have not seen a ministry that sincere. Amazing. But that also says something. I value this. Celebrate this. And of course, recently, you know, we were told to sue. Serious? Well, seriously, like no millions. Everything we had. 
from school of the Holy Spirit. And it was instruction. It's send everything there. Celebrate what God is doing there. And we did it. And any other day God said we should do, we will do it again. Am I asking for what is there? No. I'm celebrating what is there. That whatever God puts in me that relates with what is there should also come alive. But not that, not that anointing. Why? The Spirit comes upon you and smears you for a particular purpose. And that purpose is always a problem to be solved. <laughs> I said I'll talk about purpose tomorrow. And I don't know what I'm doing about that today. Okay. Oh Lord, have mercy on me. The last thing, what the Holy Spirit, what when the Spirit comes upon somebody, when the Spirit comes upon you and smears you with anointing, one of the things that it does, that anointing gives you purpose. Did I say that? Yesterday, I'm not sure I told you that. So anointing gives purpose. And tomorrow, by the grace of God, we may spend time with it. Anointing gives you purpose. Once the Holy Ghost comes upon a man, a woman, and smears that person, there is a purpose. So it's not for popularity. It's not for large fellowship. Those ones are accidental, not the essential. The essential is knowing why does this grace come upon me and concentrating with all your might on it, all your judgment before God will be based on that. The last thing I want to talk to you about what to, what to say about anointing coming upon you. What the anointing is that? Anointing is the proof that you have God's backing. In business, how do we know you are backing from God? Because in business world, there must be backing. In political world, there must be backing. In ministry, there must be backing. In every dimension of life that is correlates with God's purpose for man, there must be backing. If that backing does not come from God, it will either come from man. And you know the end of it. The scripture says, give us help against our foe. For the help of man is useless. Or, it will come from Satan. And if your help comes from God, I mean from man, that one is, it means it actually comes from the devil. It's just that you are not aware. In politics, you see that no one anywhere on earth does politics successfully without backing. <laughs> in profession, in careers, some people reach a stage and they have all the qualification to get to the zenith and they cannot get there. In most of the time, they don't have backing that can take them up. There are certain organizations who wants to reach, you must serve Satan to move the next stage. In church, established churches, you can be the best candidate for certain places and you get close. Nobody gives it to you if you don't have backing. So sometimes those who end up being either bishop or these in established churches, they are not the best though. They are the ones who have backing. So he takes somebody with extraordinary backing from God. Say God. So anointing is divine backing. So anointing is the proof that now God they back you. Glory to God. <laughs> Write it down. <laughs> I love it. As a young priest, I anoint my principal in 2005. The second person I served under he found me so arrogant because I was very independent. Or do my work. I would do what I should do. But I also had planned all my holidays. I will go out to make music. I will go out to do it. And he would sit me down, wake me up very early and remind me of everyone who has behaved like me, who failed. Tell me you look like one of them. You are so intelligent and gifted, but you fail. I didn't hear it. One day he told me, people like us, you should know how you behave with us. Because we are the ones to speak for you. When it matters. And this boy has been arrogant. 
If I were not me, I would not be my friend. There's no way I can be my friend. I would prefer a better person. I looked at him. He said, I can never. I said, the God who called me, if he cannot back me, let me fail. I will never. He said, I don't believe in God, Father. He will never forget it. I was just beginning. It was just one year and a few months. And somebody who had PhD from the mighty institution of the church that is feared and reverent, a lawyer, the Catholic church, you don't joke with it. I said, if God doesn't back me, let me fail. I don't believe I have never had a Godfather. Nobody answer. God has backed me up. I'm standing here not because a man backed me. I have backup that is God. So the anointing is a proof that God is the one who backs you up. So if you follow the details of anointing, you will never fail. Because that, that anointing is an indication that you are not ordinary. That's it. <laughs> so in business, if you have an oil from God, you will reach the point that people reach you through Ogboni or through whatever. They say, if you don't join Freemason, if you don't join the Illuminati, if you don't join this, you cannot get. But if you are backed by God, you walk through the fire and it shall not burn you. The reason why many people reach a point, they cannot accept the backing of Satan, but they don't have this backing of God. And they say, I will not. And they end there. So I reached the point I was offered opportunity to join cult before I'm promoted. I said, instead of joining cult, I say, ah, it's not about being happy that you did not join cult. Did you join God? You served God, but you didn't join God. Who told you the devil rules this world? It's God that governs the world. Satan rules in darkness. Wherever darkness is, Satan is ruling there. So how do you deny Satan rulership? Stay in the light. Because he does not rule in the light. He rules in the darkness. So if you serve God, get God to back you up. A season like this is a season you say, Lord, anoint me. People are looking for banana. And when they come and you don't talk about banana, they say, that man doesn't know what people need these days. Just be talking about things. You've been receiving banana. Are you not hungry? Monkeys deal with bananas. And they remain monkeys. How can I come and teach you monkeys gospel? I said, I'm me and so far. I was sent to turn people into beings of God. And that is by revelation. God said, let us make man in our image and likeness. Not for them to eat banana. Let them rule. Your purpose is too big to be reduced to some handouts. That God gave me a car. Yahoo boys drive better cars. So does God need to give you a car to be God? You need the backing of God to do impossible things. That by the end of it, even those in Satan will say, Abba see more, Abba. And those in Satanic kingdom will look at you and say, That your God. Serve that your God. Oh. Because they have tried everything. And they discover this man has the backing of the Almighty. Rise to your feet. <laughs> say, In the name of Jesus. In Goshen 2024, Father, anoint me with divine backing. Oh, shout it louder. Say, let your spirit come upon me. And then smear me with your oil. And prove that you are the one backing me. Pray that prayer. Lay your hand on your head and pray that prayer.
Jesus Christ. Father, I'm asking, as I speak your word, let the Spirit come upon people. And let each one be smeared with the corresponding oil of purpose. The one who was made a warrior, let the warrior in that person rise from this system. The one that was designed for wealth, let the wealth creation power come upon that person in the name of Jesus. Be seated. Sir, gospels of blessing, 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 they insult me. Just talking blessing, blessing, blessing with God. Bless my house. Jesus did not bring that. He brought life. The proof of the gospel is not that you have land. What landed property do you have that bony people do not have better? Those who make rituals, sacrifice human beings do not have better. What Jesus brought is that a useless, wretched thing becomes a ruler in the spirit. A potentate in an area that the devil will come and say, Shh, there's somebody who lives in that house. Since he moved in, we can hear them brother. We can hear them. That is what Jesus brought. He brought God being back to the flesh. Because when God said, let us make man in our image and likeness, he said, let's make God being on earth. And Adam and Eve failed. God being left the earth. And Christ came without human blood origin as God being in the flesh so that God being can return to the flesh. That is the height of the gospel. A man who has not gotten that revelation has no qualification to call the name of Jesus. He needs to be taught. So sometimes people teach, if you are born again, you will enjoy this and that. Sir, just Christ, God didn't say, let us make man in our image and likeness so that they can enjoy this and that. Let us make man in our image and likeness. And let them do what? Rule over what people are enjoying. Be governor over what people enjoy. He said, you shall know the truth. The truth shall set you free. Okay. So this thing has been made clear to our spirit. It's been made so clear to our spirit. So we don't try to compare. And we don't try to, and we don't do anything to impress anybody. I don't need to own anything to make somebody feel that God has blessed me. He has blessed me. What is the evidence? I am the blessing of people. Since I resigned, I have seen unprecedented move of God. In, and the, the highest point is the transformation of life. Marriage is restored instantly. Destinies rebuilt. Deliverance cases that could be called impossible. Made easy. One of the young girls that stood here and sang, I keep referring. What day she will give us? We will give her like 30 minutes to be able to articulate her testimony. Scary experience of a young girl. I said, I'm not going to lay hands on you. I don't, have, I don't respect Satan in this place. I was told, oh, that demon. The threat is that if any unqualified person lays hands on you, the people will die. So the day she manifests our ministers, took care of her. The mother was in panic mode. Those people are not qualified to torture her. You are the only person qualified. He said, Madam, in this place we don't respect demons. We don't know their ranks. I said, those people touch her, share in this grace that I carry. They don't have lesser grace. By the time that they, those kingdoms left her, there was no extra effort. I didn't do, I can't even remember when. And she will see you. They joy in her. I say for the first, she says for the first time in my life, I go to bed and I sleep. Stories, incredible stories like that. Sir, that for me is the blessing of the call. It's not the car I drive. It's 
nonsense. It's not the house I live in. A house can be burned in one minute. A car can crash and kill you. But a life transformed. They are the evidence that God is on earth. Kalabo I want to make you hungry for God's backing. You've been hearing anointing, anointing in strange tongues. You don't understand what anointing is. Anointing is divine backing. So now you begin to ask, how does it begin? This, this, the spirit of the Lord God is what? Upon me. That's it. Once the spirit comes upon you, bam. The spirit doesn't come upon you just to make no God, God, God says speak in tongues. People say, you know, speaking in tongues is the evidence of the spirit. The devil has tongues. We have been praying for possessed people. You speak in tongues, they begin to speak in tongues also. Iso, Iso. And you get confused. <laughs> so which tongue is tongue now? How can I be praying for somebody I know is possessed by devil, devil, and he's praying in tongues? You see, when you are born again, once you pray in tongues, that means you are saved. It's not true. Because <laughs> the devil also gives tongues. The proof is transformation. That you rule. Until you, you come to a place that you rule over things. You subdue things. And things are under you, sir. You are not yet saved. Your salvation is not yet mature. Rulership is the proof of salvation. An anointing brings that about. That's how God governs the earth. <laughs> Father said, Father, Julius, God had you in mind. So you go back and subdue things. Now you understand why I've been talking to you in a certain way. Some moment I got angry with you. So we don't keep babies in this kingdom. You must grow up. Get ready to face demons. That's it. Be seated, sir. I'm so happy God brought you here. I would not have thought about it. By the time you leave this place, you go and conquer and rule. Divine back. You must prove God is with you. Bishop being with you doesn't mean you can go far. No man can take that credit. Only God will take the credit. I backed him. God said, I backed him up. He was there. The scripture says, Jesus went about doing good, not because he was backed by his family. Because he was anointed by the Holy Spirit. After he healed the man, and the Jews came and asked the man that was born blind, he said, so who healed you? He said, Jesus. What do you say of him? He says, there is no man who can do what he did except God is with him. He had divine backing. I challenge you. Take God's backing. Go and succeed in business. They say, oh, in this area, things don't flourish, but God told you to do it. Did God tell you? Yes. And did God approve you to be there? Yes. With his backing, prosper. Simple. It is an opportunity to prove that God is with me. So why I love difficult things? God, you don't know how I was brought up. I didn't like challenges. I grew up, my mother had issues with me. One specific thing my mother used to deal with me about was I didn't like challenges. So my mother would try to carry something and I cannot receive. My mother would say, no, Carry like a man. My mother was a lioness. Carry it like a man. And you will try and you will carry it. So all through my Catholic priesthood, one of the things God had to take me through many years to correct in ministry, I easily faced discouragement. A little thing, I will snap. Call somebody up. Go and do that ministry for me. I had resources so I could just travel. Just go to somewhere, get it down. Or I plan for a big meeting like this that we have spent millions of naira. And you come and say, you, you will not sleep that night. You will be so depressed. The following day you come back very unwillingly and very angry with God. I fasted and prayed. All of this, why did you not do this? That's how I lived. Do you know what happened after I left here last night? If you go to where I stay in the office, Ezekiah Walker has been playing from Last night, till now, it's non-stop. Every praise to our God. 
Every, every word, word of worship, right? Every praise, every praise. I, that's how I pray the whole night. The gratitude. Yes, I have begun. We expected millions. A few folks showed up. That is my little that contains the universe for me. I've been celebrating from that time till now. That song is playing non-stop on my speaker. Non-stop. Why I have been taught. God took me through it. So if I plan for a million and I see hundred, I say, oh, so a million is hidden in this hundred. So I celebrate the hundred as if it is a million. That's what God has taught me. So I don't feel disappointed. God has brought me through that training, so I don't feel disappointed. You know me, I'm large, right? You know, my mind is crazy. I go all out. If at the end of it, one arrives, in those days, I will be so bitter and this ministry will have been ruined. I will come out so they low. So I had to listen to intensity of prayer in the morning. He didn't feel like it. I looked for just come here. Slap whoever was praying in the morning. How dare you pray like if there are three people, pray like there are three million. Can you pray nonsense? I will slap you. How dare you do that? Raise the intensity. And I was so blessed this morning. As I came to pray here, my, some of my children have been praying pre the previous night into as early as four. Young girls are walking around like mad people praying, getting angry. And they only go say, yes, that's what God sent me to raise. Wild, young, beautiful girls are normal. You should see them on the street. I said, see, see, no way. See them in the night, they are back. I say, yes. I say, yes, this is my consolation. If I have not seen another one million, we have... We have turned one young beautiful sissy into a warrior who prays through it the whole night. I come out early in the morning to pray. You see young women and young boys back in. They have started the previous day from 10 p.m. or 11 p.m. 4 a.m., 5 a.m. People are still praying. I say, that's it. I turn into warriors and you fear them. Even you human being in the flesh, you fear them. Fear them. So while waiting for millions to arrive, we praise God for this one. So the little is the container. <laughs> Stand up and give God glory and give a shout. Give a louder shout. In the name of Jesus, your little will give birth to plenty. I thought you understood and that you will shout at me. I say your little will give birth to abundance. Be seated. So go home and, and celebrate your little. Your husband has been giving you 100 naira to feed the children for one week. Go and celebrate the 100 naira. And celebrate. Go and celebrate the 100 naira. And tell God to give you a creative way of using 100 naira to feed. Jesus used five loaves to fish them. Instead of complaining all the time. Celebrate the little. Some of you, you lose your marriages because you complain too much. Learn to be grateful for little. Somebody buys you earrings. Oh, what's supposed to go get guru? Amen. me. So, my husband, so this is the earring. This is just this one that your eyes could see. Celebrate that one first. What I want to share very briefly, the time is already gone, just let me drop cases and then we go into asking God in just three minutes to prove himself in your life. Three minutes. Today, I want to let you know anointing marks the beginning. How does God make a man or a woman to begin? He sends his spirit upon you and the spirit smears you with oil. And once the spirit smears with oil, it is telling you, it's time to go. Jesus waited till that moment. Elisha served Elijah for long. But until it came upon him, he did not prophesy. The Americans say, fake it until you make it. 
Yeah. And so a lot of people draw that into ministry. Say, just fake it until you make it. <laughs> a lot of things that are done in ministry now trendy, modern day things, plastic Christianity. Which nation built cathedrals and mansions with plastic? <laughs> Enduring material. Yeah. So, anointing marks the beginning. God gave me a prophecy that I had to write down. I hardly write down prophecy. While I was, while this thing hit me, God said I should write this prophecy down. Rise to your feet. Let me prophesy. As I wrote it down. As I wrote it down. Every one of you here, including somebody who connects online intentionally, honorably, not judgmentally, every one of you who pays attention this season to receive what is given from this altar shall receive specific anointing to begin. You know, we already made that as a covenant. Now, you see, that covenant came from the place of the Spirit because as at that time, I had not come to what I wrote down. So the Spirit doesn't lie. It was a covenant now. is a word to confirm. Raise your two hands. I say, everyone, as many as will walk in this season, will understand it. We still have tomorrow and have Thursday, Friday. For those of you who have opportunity to be here on our anniversary, which is the end of it for this year, and going through it with understanding and honor, with spiritual perception, you shall receive specific oil, smearing, coloring of the spirit to begin in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you what I see. Somebody who's been waiting for opportunity to begin the building of your own house. After Sunday, start executing the plan. Don't tell me there is no money. Go and start preparation. Because when you have divine backing, everything else responds to you. In Jesus' name. Somebody who have had a plan to marry and say, oh, I have resources. Oh, there is. Shh. Go, sit down, make plans for that marriage. If God had brought you to whom you marry, to marry, and you know the time, this time I should have married, but the problem is resources. Oh, by the backing of God, resources will serve you in the name of Jesus. Be seated, be seated, be seated. So let's see. Let's say anointing marks the beginning. Moses was 80 years, he had failed. Had history of failure for 40 years. And God said, after 40 years of failure, you now know you are useless. So no way will you take credit. Moses was raised as a royal in the court of Pharaoh. I did a course on Egyptology. Studied a little bit about Egypt. Understood that the Pharaoh, the next Pharaoh does not necessarily have to be the biological son of the Pharaoh that is passing away. In most cases, it is a general in the army who marries the daughter. In some cases, for certain pharaohs to emerge, a, a brother from another wife will marry the daughter, the sister, in order to qualify to be a pharaoh. So Moses took a great chance, though he was Hebrew, adopted. He had a great chance to become the next pharaoh after the one that was alive when he had problem. So he was raised as a military general. He was raised. The secret of Egypt lay in two, three things. Two, three things in Egypt. One of it was their military. They had extraordinary military. 
The other one was the Nile. Agriculture. All season, they had ways. They had developed technology to keep food. They had abundance of food. And I don't want to go into others. So for you to be a pharaoh, you had to have military might. And the history about Egypt is that every time a pharaoh ruled for too long and became old, the kingdom declined because he had no power to go out for war. So a pharaoh had to be young and strong. And they died young most of the time. And another will. So military was there. And Moses was trained in that way. He was trained in the philosophy. These guys had developed knowledge. They had developed knowledge. The word chemistry, do you know, comes from Egypt. The word chemistry in the original word of Egypt, chemistry actually means kemet. Or chem either kemet or carpet. And Egypt, they called themselves carpet because they had the technology of sustaining human body after death. The Egyptian mummies. And you know that's chemistry. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So they had knowledge. They were scientists. They were powerful. So anybody trained in that aristocratic environment was arrogant. So God kept him for four years for all of that arrogance to go. We have been kept this long also for a lot of arrogance to go. So we have learned a lot. Now I'm begging God. Enough. <laughs> Today I thank you and say thank you for being stern with me and yet being tender. And he has dealt with me. If he didn't deal with me early, I would have so reasoned mightily and then failed forever. Yeah. So that is the background of Pharaoh who had a destiny to bring people out. The name, I mean the, 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 the destiny of Moses. The name Moses means drawn out. So his destiny was to draw Egypt, Israel, out of Egypt. But God gave him opportunity. If he did it at the earliest stage, he would say, I am mighty. I am honorable. I am... God doesn't give you qualification for boast. He denies you every kind of right to boast. He breaks some people that he wants to use. Until you are broken, you are not yet ready for divine backup. <laughs> let's not talk about it I've been there and I'm still there by the grace of God I'm breathing and panting so this man Pharaoh I mean Moses look at Exodus chapter 3 he had forgotten about significance and importance and God showed up now Moses chapter 3 verse 1 of Exodus Chapter 3, verse 1. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in, in what? Come on, come on. In what? Flame of fire. Take it to, to, take it to Acts of Apostles, chapter 2. Acts of Apostles, chapter 2, from verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had fully come. <laughs> they were together in one accord in one place and suddenly there came what? a sound from heaven announcement that something is invading the earth what they heard as of a rushing mighty wind after that and it filled the whole house where they were sitting <laughs> it means power has come then there appeared to them divided tongues as of what? Flames of fire. And one sat upon each of them. Sir, this is the beginning. Peter had told Jesus, you know, if everybody denies you, count on me. <laughs> and when the time came, Jesus counted on him. Because the slave girl terrorized him. All of them ran away. After Jesus died, go and check the all account of the death of Jesus. Only one that says John the beloved was there. All the apostles, they were afraid. Only women stood. Women, they don't fear. If, women, if a woman fears something, don't try to find out what it is. Run. <laughs> no, absolutely. If a woman fears something, you as a man, don't try to find out what are you running away from. 
just run away far for, before you find out. <laughs> so women stood there, Mary Magdalene and the other woman. They stood there and said, if you want to kill me, what is my own life? Jesus was the only life. Come and kill me now. So they stood there and saw the whole drama. These men that ate with him, drank with him. But when the fire came upon them, they started. They began. When it comes upon you, somebody doesn't suggest to you. It becomes irresistible. When the fire of success comes upon you, you don't need time to argue. An argument does not stand. When the anointing of greatness comes upon you, protocol of ancestral limitation are still there, but they are happy to let you go. He said, Take carry you. Remember, oh, demons celebrate your freedom. I'm speaking upon somebody now. Between now and Friday, that same fire will come upon somebody. And your voice will be heard. I say your voice will be heard. I say your voice will be heard. In the name of Jesus. Be seated. Be seated. I came to raise somebody. The Holy Spirit told me every time of beginning is taking another person with you. So pay attention. This time that we are beginning, there are specific people God has sent here that this is a time for them to. So pay, walk by knowledge. Walk by knowledge. Push yourself. Because I cannot lie. Because I hear it from God. So that's it. You have seen that. So this is what happened to Moses. So the first thing Moses saw was fire. And sometimes we underrate. We thought the fire was curiosity about curiosity. No. The fire was to bring him into the place where he will discover God as his backing. Because God said go. And the only thing he didn't say go because of your knowledge as a military man. Go and say I send you. That means I am the one who backs you. That's it. After Moses argued and argued and argued, the only thing God did, God gave him his name. God gave him a staff. Just two. An anointing brings you into the mystery of walking in God's name. God's name means you have God's backing. When you say the governor sent me, you go to a commissioner's office. The governor had asked me to see you. If that commissioner is wise, he sits up. Please be seated. What may I do? Why? You are carrying the backing of the governor. Okay. So this is the story of Moses. Have you seen it? Anointing made the man return. He went back to Pharaoh because he was anointed. He began again. That's it. So he was equipped, anointing equipped. I've told you that. The story of Elisha, the same thing. Elisha did not begin. This, the scripture said a man that poured water upon the hands of Elijah. This man saw the extraordinary. This man, he could make, he could fake it until he will make it. In the realm of the supernatural, you don't fake it until you make it. It is appointed. Until you are appointed, your faking has no authority. And it makes you an endangered species. Endangered species in the supernatural. The demons eat you up. Those who walk about trying to do what God has not asked them to do. They pay the price that they cannot afford to pay. This thing comes from divine backing with proof that you have been backed up. Proof is not your desire. It is God's desire. This is what anointing is about. So you can only receive. You don't take. You receive it. The oil I carry gives me immunity against certain things. That's what oil does. The color you carry gives you immunity in a specific area. Gives you security. Did I tell you yesterday that anointing carries everything in it? I told you that don't forget so you don't need anointing and then another thing 
your men and women are in that anointing. Your opportunities, resources, your battles, your battles, your enemies, your opposition, everything is an anointing, in that anointing. And the mantle, the staff to cross the Red Sea, everything is in it. Assurance of victory is in it. So once it is upon you, bam, move. Saul told, Samuel told Saul, after pouring oil upon him, as you go, you will see this. See this person with bread, with this, with that. And he said, take the bread. Give him strong. You will meet your people. You will meet your provision. And once you see these signs, go ahead and do whatever is put in your hand. For the Lord is with you backing the proof that the anointing is working. That's, that's the mystery of this thing. So it makes some of us, we say things that people feel, you will die, yo. People are so afraid for us. They like, care. Do you know how many, how many deaths have, have run away from us? They try to kill us. They are tired of trying to kill us. Praise God. I think we are done. Lastly, Jesus Christ did not, did not begin. This is where we end. So that we take the next 10 minutes, settle issues, and then go. Jesus Christ did not begin until the anointing came upon him. Luke chapter 3, verse 21 to 22. And then Luke chapter 4, from verse 1 to 2. Luke chapter 3, verse 21 to 22. When all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also was baptized. And while he prayed, the heaven was opened. And the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him. And the voice came from heaven which said, You are my beloved son. In you I'm well pleased. By the Spirit there is divine backing. that what happened Luke chapter 4 verse 1 to 2 then Jesus <laughs> glory to God can you read it everyone then Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit returned from where the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into what the wilderness the beginning with temptations I told you in that anointing the demons are also all the persecution, all the troubles are caused. So you, once you are anointed, you don't need to look for trouble. You already have enough because there are battles to be fought. <laughs> so you cannot carry back divine backing and now look for trouble. If you carry divine backing in your office, your colleagues will not like you. So you don't need to go and annoy your back colleague. Be humble because they already hate you. So don't go and walk about like that. You know, just be humble. You are already annoying enough because you have divine backing. That your things are different. Your favor and all of that. That is enough. So now don't be cocky and saucy. And put rubbing things on people's face. Put your favor in your pocket and be humble. Call everybody auntie and uncle. And sir. Let them not have a reason to come to have double portion over you. Praise God. That's wisdom. Because you're already annoying. There is enough, there's enough battle, so don't look for one. So the Holy Spirit led him. All this why, why did he not go to face the demons? The anointing had not yet come. This was not for Jesus, it was for us to know. It was not for Jesus. It's a type of the new man. Jesus Christ came as a revelation of the new man. That for you to operate in divine purpose, whether in business, in politics, in whatever, that this is the order. Wait until there is power from heaven. And when it has come upon you, don't wait for preparation. Don't wait for another one year. Follow instruction. It is the spirit that led him. Take a step. Take a step of faith. Start where you are. Luke chapter 4, four verse 14 to 15. We are wrapping up. Luke 4, verse 14 to 15. Then Jesus returned in the power of the spirit to Galilee. He returned in the power. At this moment, is no longer Jesus, the son of Mary. Is Jesus, the son of God. Jesus, the son of God, apart from the fact that he came from God as the son of God, the eternal word of God made flesh. But now is the revelation 
that Jesus is backed by God. It settled every doubt until the, now the mother and people around him may, may, may have been wondering, is he still from God? Why is he still at home lazing around and working in the carpenter's workshop? But by the power of the Holy Spirit, it became very clear to everyone, this man had a divine backing. So, the anointing reveals you as God's son. And this is the revelation I have about ministry that forbids me from having father. Spiritual father. And I'm not ready to go into that. I'm completely forbidden because the spirit gives you divine origin. Gives you divine fatherhood. So I have mentor in the core, talking about the core. Because to say, my father in the core means the one from whom my core originates. You know, I studied philosophy for four years. As a Catholic priest, you are trained in the mind first before you are trained anywhere. So, words are very powerful. So, when the Pentecostal circle say, my father in the Lord. My father in the Lord means you are begotten in the order of the call. This man begot you. It's a setting aside of divine origin. It's a breaking of something fundamental. But since they don't know, it may not have implication. But once you know, you know cannot, you cannot joke. So I know. So I'm forbidden from saying my father in the Lord. I can call somebody father as a place of honor, as my teacher just said, Father Odoite is one of the few people I call my father. If I call him my father, I am talking about the honor of somebody who taught me. So in the Lord, you have teachers. You can call them fathers. This is my father, somebody who teaches me, who mentors me. That is honor and recognition. But when you say, my father, you know, the way some people say, you know, my father in the Lord is paternity of origin. It means my call in the Lord owes his origin and his terminal point from there. It's a, a shift that is deep. A fundamental shift. But because people don't know, so it doesn't really imply anything, but I know. So, because the Holy Ghost, once it comes upon you, you cease to have human ancestry as the ultimate. So, the spirit of the call makes you God's begotten in the call. I don't know how to... You now have ancestry. You can have some ministers that share the same clan with you spiritually. There are people who have the tribe of the prophets, the tribe of the teachers, the tribe of the wise, the tribe different. So you see your co correlating with other people. But the ancestry of it, the origin of it is the father from whom every gift comes, from whom the spirit comes. I pray for you. Rise to your feet. Today, we are dealing with we are ending this with the spirit. We had agreed. And we are solidifying that agreement now. That from this moment, the last 10 minutes we have to leave this place. That from this moment, the spirit that makes one to become of God, such that it can be said, that business grace, that business power that man has comes from God. There may have been a man who mentored you, but it didn't come from God. I told you, anointing gives you divine backing. Not human backing. Not the backing of your father in the Lord. Not the backing of your senior pastor. Not the backing. That senior pastor is a facilitator. It's the one through whom God does it. Or the person you recognize, oh, that's my father in the Lord, is a human facilitator. But the ancestry of it, the origin of it is God who has sent the spirit of virus. Lift up your two hands. All eyes closed. Every day there is a commitment 
For every child of God here, the next two minutes, you will make a reconsecration, a rededication of your will. I keep talking about will. Recently listening to somebody that I accept now as a teacher, I'm going through ministry school under him, an ancient grace that God gave to a man. Drew my attention to the will. It was by the will that Adam and Eve turned against God. It is only by your will that you can turn to God. Saying what without your will shifting and handing into the hand of God, those words are empty. So, as a child of God, daily you renew that your will is in God, that you have put your will in God, that you will not use your will to fight God. You will not use your will to rebel against God. And if you are in this place, and by the help of the Spirit, you know you have not experienced the salvation of God, your sins are not forgiven, you are not at peace with God. And shall Jesus call you home tonight, you are not sure of where you are going to. You will make a confession handing your will. Once you hand over your will to God, that you will no longer use your will to sin against God. You will no longer use your will for yourself, but for God. God's grace will come into your life. The gifts of new life will flow in you. So I'm going to say this one word. It applies to believers as rededication by which you let go anything that you hold on to as a believer that is ungodly. And as somebody who is coming to Christ for the first time, you use these words to take decision and turn your will from God. Say, Lord Jesus Christ. I want to hear it very clearly. Say, Lord Jesus Christ. Right now, I recognize you. I want to hear it well. Say, I recognize you as the only son of God who came in the flesh paid the price for my life I recognize that I cannot save myself that I was born a sinner rebellious but I choose now to turn from rebellion I turn my will from sin and I let go everything that is ungodly. I don't have power to do this by myself, but by your grace, I turn this will to you and turn my back against evil. I surrender to you. Please wash me. Cleanse me. Specific things you are letting go. Confess now and just speak. As a believer, things you are struggling with, you've been struggling with for a long time. Things, the scripture talks about the sin that clings to us. As somebody coming to the Lord, make confession. Confess. Scripture says, if we confess our sins, he's righteous. The child of all renew your consecration that you are not you don't accept partial holiness confess that you dedicate yourself totally to holiness to holiness living and holy living as somebody coming to Christ fresh ask the blood to wash you Ask him to make you whole. Lord Jesus Christ, please come into these lives. Call him. Ask him to come into your life personally. As a child of God, ask him, you need this anointing. As a child of God, say, I need this, your spirit and the smearing of the oil for my purpose. And you are the only one. Take away from me things that hinder your life, you know. Yield your heart. Sins are forgiven. As you speak, yokes of addiction 
yokes of pornography, yokes of masturbation, yokes of lesbian, and yokes of homosexual. Somebody here, you are married. You are married to your husband, but also married to a woman that you are a partner to in lesbianism. All those things, those yokes, God is breaking yokes. God is lift up your toe and God is breaking yokes. Yokes of betting. God had made a promise he will break yokes. As you speak, lift up your toe and speak. Ask the spirit of Jesus to come into your life. Say, Lord Jesus, let your spirit come upon me. Make me new. Make me fresh. The yokes of anger, the yokes of lust, the yokes of envy, the yokes of hate. The foul thing, the foul spirit, it doesn't have a hold. Things are leaving you. Lift up your two hands. Spirits are leaving you. Foul spirits are leaving you. As I speak, they are leaving you. A marine spell is leaving you. A man who had come under the spell of the marine and you started hating your wife. The spell has left you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to pray for you in just 30 seconds and you will call the name Jesus three, seven times as I instruct you and then at the seventh time you will keep calling for another one minute after that I will bless you and go the miraculous will happen in your life yeah. lift up your two hands Father in the name of Jesus I have made known your counsel as you have instructed me as you have revealed to my spirit to these ones many have come from distant places and this place takes a distance to get out this is the proof of their faith not faith in me but faith in you father it was you we announced and it is you we announced as the god of power and might i'm asking let every cancer be healed eye issues ear issues dumbness affliction of every kind internal organs that have been damaged let there be replacement every form of injury whatever it is somebody's job that is on the line somebody's business that is crumbling somebody's marriage that is shattering Lord as we call that name that you give to us except there is another name after that that you will give us but since there is no other name as we call that name seven times representing the seven days of creation i'm asking let the walls of king the kingdoms of the, the devil crumble and let every soul standing here by your anointing over them emerge into health and the multiple blessings of your kingdom Amen. in Jesus name Amen. so I'm going to call Jesus and you shout it Jesus shout it Jesus. do Jesus shout it loud Jesus. three Jesus shout it louder Shout it louder. Five. Jesus, shout it louder. Six. Jesus, shout it louder. The Holy Spirit will open doors. Doors are being opened. Miracles, signs, and wonders. Open heaven of finance. Breakthroughs. Chains, yokes broken. Diseases disappear. Restoration of hopes, of destinies. Brain injury. 
be healed. Spinal cord injury be healed. Breakthrough in office, in the political place, in every area. Seven, Jesus! Keep shouting, keep shouting, keep shouting. Keep calling, 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 keep calling. He's moving, he's moving, he's moving, he's moving, he's moving. The dead is rising, the dead is rising, the dead is rising, the dead is rising, the dead is rising. Graves are open, 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 come out. Come out, come out, come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. Image, image, be healed, be healed, be restored. You are free, you are free. Eyes open, eyes open, ears be open. Don't speak now. Minds restored, autism is gone. You break every chain. You break every chain. You break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain. To break every chain. To break every chain. Lift up those two hands and wave. Acknowledge His power. Holy Spirit, confirm the wonders of the Father in the finished work of Jesus. Confirm what has been done. Confirm healing. Confirm deliverance. Confirm restoration by signs and wonder and potent. Restore lives. Feel this one to the brain. Feel every life. Raise this one into an army of holiness, of power. Baptize them with power in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory. Glory. Say thank you. Just take some time and say thank you. Just say thank you. Just say thank you. Open your mouth, say thank you. Thank you. Say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name.